Friends, since we're live streaming the service, we are going to begin. Please bring your acknowledgments, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. We are going to begin the service for Mr. Jack Hirsch. I would ask any of you who have a cellular phone or any other type of noise-making device to please turn it to the off position. Officiating our service here today will be Rabbi Eleanor Smith, MD. Thank you. Good morning. I want to thank all of you for making the effort to be with us today, both in person and those of you who are joining us uh, electronically. The greatest obligation and gift of mourning in our tradition is your presence. And it helps fulfill the cornerstone of our obligation to others when they've had a close loss. We call that principle nihum avelim, meaning whatever it is that will bring comfort to the mourners. And I know that your presence here today and in the days after this and in the days before this and your gestures and efforts and phone calls do exactly this to bring comfort in a space of loss. I feel privileged to be here today to help remember and celebrate Jack's life. Bonnie and I have known each other for almost 30 years and we have shared times of joy and times of loss and sorrow and mystery. And I feel very grateful to have stood with Jack and Bonnie under the chuppah in 2007 as they pledged their lives to each other, having no idea, as none of us ever do, all that would lie ahead. And those were years that had great richness and challenge. And today, collectively, we hold all that together with and for Bonnie and for ourselves as well. Jack was a man of outsized energy, life, love. I was touched when Bonnie said that one of the people who works at uh, North Shore Place, where Jack had been living these last two years, mentioned that the residents would be bereft in Jack's absence. To be 90 years old, and to be many years into an Alzheimer's diagnosis, and yet to have so much of yourself remain that those around you are aware of and touched by your presence and will note your absence is truly a deep and sweet testimony to all that Jack was even as the years and his health took certain parts of him away from himself and from the people that he loved. Today we're going to have the privilege to hear from some of Jack's family who knew him best of all of us and as we are listening in our own minds and hearts we will be thinking about our own memories of Jack. Um, before we begin to hear those memories I'd like to share some beautiful words from our tradition. From the book of Ecclesiastes we are reminded and it's a passage that's never out of time, that for everything there is a season, a time for every experience under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, and sometimes a time for both at once a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. The 23rd Psalm is sacred in all traditions and reminds us both of the gift of life and the lonely passages that we all traverse. 
on the journey through health and illness and back to health. And I share that now. Adonai roi lo echsar b'yinot eshe yar b'tseni al mei menuchot yinahaleni nafshi yashovel yancheni b'mog letzarek l'ma'an shemo gam ki elech b'geitz al mavit lo irara ki ata imadi shivtecha u'mishantecha Hema yinach amuni Ta'aruch lefanai shulchan neged Tzorerai Di shanta vashemen roshi Kosi revaya Ach tov v'chesed Yirdifuni Kol yamei chayai V'shavti b'vet Adonai L'orech yamim God is my shepherd, I shall not be bereft. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, and restores my soul. You lead me in right paths for the sake of your name and all that is good in the world. Even when I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for I am not alone. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of my creator forever. I'd like to invite Jack's daughter, Beth, to come and share thoughts and memories, please. I'm kind of a techie nerd, it's on my phone. So I wanna thank everyone who came here today, um, literally from far and wide, New York, Colorado, Israel. Um, your presence is more than comforting, all of you. So thank you. Crap. Nope, I'm good, thank you. Thank you though. Just give me a second. I was not going to do this. Whew. Okay. Writing anything like this is not easy. I think one of the reasons I have come to discover is that with time and age, details of our memories seem to slip away. It seems as though bad memories, like nightmares, seem to retain more specifics. And pleasant ones, like a good dream, become a general recollection of a time or a place or an event and a, a sense of feeling happy. As I write this, I'm desperately trying to pick the best memory of my dad. One with a great story that incorporates humor and love and all things wonderful and I just can't find that perfect one. There's many. Not that there aren't any but I suppose, I guess none that would honor my dad in a way that I feel I should honor him. As someone quite wisely told me recently, funerals are for the living. So with that, I feel I should share not a memory per se, but a time that I am grateful for. Over the last several years, I became much closer to my dad. Not because he was sick, but because he was different and I was different. I looked forward to taking my dad to breakfast every Sunday to go to Georgie V's or Panera or anywhere, really. It was just the two of us, and there was great conversation. When he still had a long-term memory, he would tell me the same story about the first and last time he used a bow and arrow. <laughs> and the friend who he was with and how far from the target the arrow went. That story was told over and over again. And even though I knew the entire story verbatim, it just never got old. As we would finish eating, I would look at his plate and I would get so frustrated because every single time he would leave one small triangle of a waffle. <laughs> that one tiny, 
tiny little piece or one tiny, tiny, tiny little piece of a pecan roll. The frustration was because who does that? You just <laughs> ate 99% of something. How could you not have room for that one last bite? And he would just say, well, I'm watching my weight. <laughs> like, which made no sense, like no sense. So I had no choice but to eat that waffle, <laughs> that bagel piece, that little piece of pecan roll. And I gained a lot of weight. <laughs> Knowing my dad, I think he intentionally left food on his plate just so we could share that laugh. I'm sharing this today. No, 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 I'm sharing this today because no matter how frustrated I was with seeing that last piece on the plate, and no matter how mad I was at myself for eating it, there was always a laugh about it, and that is how we would end those days, with a laugh, and always with "I love you." Thank you so much, Beth. That was perfect. I'd like to invite Jack's stepson, Josh, to come and share some of his memories with us. I'm a full week older than Beth, so I use paper. <laughs> I first met Jack when I was a teenager, and he quickly became a second father to me. Early in our relationship, he taught me the joys of two incredibly frustrating endeavors, golf and sports wagering. <laughs> he also introduced me to Wrigley Field and my second favorite big city, Chicago. In addition, he modeled a version of adulthood I truly admired. One could succeed enormously in the business world, remain an unabashed liberal, and appreciate simple joys like ice cream and bargain clothing. Then, of course, there was Jack's generosity, which did so much for me and my family's quality of life. Perhaps most meaningful to me and my sister Janet is how happy he made our mother. She adored him and loved being his wife. When she became ill with cancer, he remained by her side until she passed. Jack was also an adoring grandfather, or Papa Jack, to Michaela and Duncan. In between visits with Jack and Bonnie, we shared conversations about politics, sports, and movies. He regularly asked about the private therapy practice I started, and he expressed confidence that it would succeed. Jack was a blessing to me and my family. And with Jack, you get the whole mishpucha. And it's great. <clears throat> May his memory be a blessing. Thank you so much. Appreciate so much your beautiful and heartfelt words. Bonnie's son-in-law, Mordechai, wrote a beautiful eulogy, which I'm going to read for him in Jack's memory. Jack and I couldn't have been much more different. He was an avowed atheist. I am an Orthodox Jew. He was politically left. I am a right winger. He was proud to be an American. I am proud to be Israeli and many other differences between us. When my beloved mother-in-law, whom I call mom or Ima, brought Jack home to meet us, first and foremost, I wanted to make sure he was worthy enough to marry my mom. And then I would figure out how we would get along. Mom and Orly went off to do something, and Jack and I were told that we were scheduled to have time together. <laughs> I remember being kind of nervous what we would talk about and how we would find common ground. I thought I would first pepper him with questions about the toy business, and he would regale me <clears throat> with his successes in business. That conversation actually never occurred. While I tried to have it a bunch of times, during the course of over 15 years that we knew each other, but I learned that he was too humble for that. We went to Topps Kosher Deli in Buffalo, and he wanted to have a more serious conversation about politics and religion. That first lunch together 
bonded us in a way that continued on through the rest of his life. We both found another person who could be opposite in many areas, but who could disagree and discuss with respect and dignity. It was amazing. Jack was not only a perfect fit for mom, but he also immediately fit into our family. He became the patriarch of the family. Orly and I found a sweet, funny, intelligent, and accomplished man, and our kids adored him. He taught them card and board games, and also simply talked to them. They also loved the fact that he wanted ice cream after every meal. He quickly became their grandpa in every sense of the word. But Jack's connect to us and our connection to Jack runs even deeper. Jack had visited Israel before we knew him, but because of his political opinions, he no longer wanted to visit. After we made Aliyah, mom told him, visiting is not a political statement. If you don't go to visit, you won't have a relationship with them. Visiting is an act of love to your kids and grandkids. And indeed, Jack came to visit a number of times. Since making Aliyah, we have lived in what we call Yehuda and Shomron, and what others call the West Bank. We originally lived in Malay Adumim, a city of 40,000 people, and then moved to a small yeshuv of 300 families, which is much deeper into our ancestral homeland. When Jack heard about our plans to move to the small yeshuv, instead of sharing his opposing political opinion, or instead of expressing his disapproval, he pulled me aside and said, if you are going to move that far out, you're going to need a car. Bonnie and I want to buy you a car. Mom has always been our biggest fan and supporter, and he became a willing partner, putting aside politics to express unending love for us. Mom and Jack also made a major contribution to the yeshiva I work at in the old city of Yerushalayim, simply as an act of love. But Jack was not only loved and adored by us, he just had a charm about him and drew people's attention. One year, when Ima and Jack came for Pesach, Jack surprisingly said, I want to visit the Kotel, the Western Wall. Our daughter Yalta and I went with him. It was forbidden for cars to enter the old city because of the large amount of people, and it was really hot. Jack said he still wanted to go. He wore the bas baseball hat that we got him for an Afikoman present, which had Yaakov, his Hebrew name, embroidered on it. It was amazing how many people said, Shalom, Yaakov. <laughs> he was like a magnet. <laughs> when we arrived, we stood near the Kotel. I asked if he wanted to go up to the wall. He did not. Something deep inside attracted him to that place and standing nearby was enough for him. Jack had a deep, caring Jewish soul filled with goodness, kindness, and love. It yearned to help make the world a better place. It yearned to make kids have fun and learn and laugh, and it provided our family with lots of fun and laughter and interesting conversation, and most of all, love. The five of us will miss you greatly. We truly merited to have you be a part of our lives. We wish it could have been longer. May your soul be bound up in the bonds of the living. Amen. When a child comes into the world, we make a blessing in the first day of its life, first days, wishing that the life that is so brand new before us will be distinguished by three great attributes, by a life of learning, Jewish learning, learning about the world, a life of love, and a life of righteous deeds. And as we join together today, at the end of those 90 years, we know that Jack's life and legacy and memory and love will be for a blessing as he managed to build for himself a life distinguished by these three core central human 
and Jewish virtues. I'd like to invite Bonnie to. Have I told you lately that I love you? Could I tell you once again somehow? Have I told you lately that I love you? Well, darling, I'm telling you now. Thank you. I'd like to invite those who can to please rise for our prayers of mourning. El male rachami, shochen bam romi, hametze menucha nechona, tachat kanfe hashchina, im kedoshi mutehori, Kazohar Harakia Mazirim Et Nishmat Yaakov Ben Yona Shahalach Leola Mo Baal Harachamim Yasti Rehu Beseter Knafav Leolamim Vitzror Bitzor Hachaim Et Nishmato Adonai hu nachalato Beyanuach b'shalom al mishkavo v'nomar Amen Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe We ask that you grant a perfect rest In your sheltering presence To Jack Hirsch, Yaakov, son of Yona Who has entered eternity God of mercy, let him find refuge in the shadow of your wings and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. Be his inheritance. May he rest with you in peace. And together we say, Amen. And I invite the mourners to join together in the saying of Kaddish, the words of which are in your uh, brochure that you might have picked up. Yit kadal, yit kadash, me rabba, bealma divra, hirte, viam lech machute, Bahayechon of Yomechon, Ubahaye de Holbet, Israel, Bagala, Wisman Kari, Vimru, Amen. Yehe, shme, rabba, mavarach, leolam, lomeo, maya, Yit barach, vish tabach, viet paar, viet romam, viet nase, Viet hadar, viet ale, viet alal, shme, de kudsha, brihu. Leila min kol birchata vashirata, tush pechata venechemata, damiran belma vimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, vachayim alenu vial kol yisrael, vimru amen. O se shalom bimromav, hu ya se shalom, alenu vial kol yisrael, vimru amen. O se shalom, shalom. Shalom bim romav, uya ase shalom aleinu, ve'al ko Yisrael, ve'imeru, amen. Memorial contributions, Mr. Hirsch's honor, will go to the Alzheimer's Disease Association, 225 North Michigan Avenue, floor 17. That's Chicago, Illinois, 60601. For those of you who are online, that address is on our website. Shiva will take place today, Sunday, 3.30 until 5.30 at the Lahayim Center, on Lake Cook Road. It's near the DMV for those people who are local. Uh, tomorrow, uh, 1865 Old Willow Road, 3 to 4.30 p.m., number 214. That's in uh, Northfield, and those addresses will be up on our website uh, a little later. 
At this time, we are going to conclude our service. I want to let you know the live stream is going to uh, cut off in just, uh, in just a moment. I'm going to ask everyone to please rise as the family is escorted back to the family room, and then everyone will be able to uh, exit to their cars. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.